David Burroughs is here from Barometer. We're talking about North American large caps, and we're off to Vancouver. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, fellows. Can you please give me your view on uh, BIN, Progressive Waste Solutions, uh, and would you think there's much growth left in this one at all? Thank you. All right. Trash sure. or treasure? <laughs> so, Jerry, uh, first of all, on BIN, you know, a uh, good, strong management team uh, who have done a good job at growing this business. Um, I think if you look across the series of, of sectors right now that are performing well, you want to be focused on groups that do benefit from a steadily, uh, slowly improving economy. Mm -hmm. And certainly as we produce more, as we use more waste sector, volumes go higher. Uh, so uh, I think that BIN is uh, uh, certainly uh, worthwhile holding at this point. It's performing well uh, so far year to date. Uh, the price performance is stronger than 85% of the stocks in the S&P. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's performing quite well. You get a 2.5% yield. This is a company that went through a big shareholder turnover when they converted from uh, 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 trust to corp uh, and cut their dividend. I think that that's, uh, we've got a solid uh, shareholder base. I like the sector. I like the company. That I'd two, be a buyer of the stock. That 2.3% uh, yield is 15 cents. Uh, and they, since 2008, have had a reputation of raising that dividend. Do you expect it to be boosted again any time? I, I think that they will continue to grow the dividend here, and they're, they're paying out about 50%, which is a you know, very reasonable dividend mm -hmm. payout. Thanks, Jerry, for the call from Vancouver. Red Deer now for Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, thanks so much. Uh, David, I was going to ask you, please, about uh, TD. I've held the stock for a number of years, and uh, it's done well for me. Uh, would it be a continued hold at this point, and I guess to sneak in a two-for-one, how would you feel about uh, adding a specific uh, U.S. Uh, big cap, say Bank of America or Citigroup, uh, to uh, kind of give a bit more specific U.S. exposure? Right. Thanks so much. All right. Paul, you hit on a really salient point. Um, first of all, TD Bank, there's nothing wrong with TD Bank. Uh, they've got great assets in Canada and in the U.S., and uh, if I had to pick one, it's probably the one that I'd like to own. And we do own it. Mm -hmm. I have to say, though, we are far more focused in U.S.-based financials today than in Canada. Canada's a very small waiting for us. You know, they traded a premium valuation and probably have uh, things not getting better. They're sort of moderating. We're in the U.S. The U.S. financials are benefiting from a recovery after major restructuring. Uh, dividend payouts are probably going to grow more quickly in the U.S. than they will here in Canada. Uh, and bigger beneficiary from the housing recovery in the U.S. where Canada's housing market is a little bit slower. So you're fine owning it. I think if you looked at, and I've looked at this just this morning, the relative strength of the Canadian banks versus the U.S. banks were basically hitting new lows for the year. So they are underperforming significantly. Mm -hmm. They're doing fine relative to Canada, but then Canada's doing poorly relative to the U.S. So I would look at a Bank of America. I think that gives you great leverage to both cons uh, commercial lending, which seems to be ramping up a little bit, and probably the likelihood of faster dividend growth over the next three years. TD is a good hold, though. Well, let's extend this conversation now uh, for the Paul Scott from Red Deer with uh, Ken in Ottawa. Hi, Ken. Yes, thanks. Uh, David, um, when the uh, U.S. went into their meltdown, basically, uh, the government handed five big banks the keys to the Treasury, and J.P. Morgan was one of them. And uh, uh, I've started to put some money into that, figuring that the U.S. banks are probably better than Canadian banks. I just wondered what you would think of J.P. Morgan as uh, as is it the first, or would you recommend others over it? Thank you. Do you like right. it more than Bank of America? So, Ken, if you went across the range of, of banks, some are going to be much higher octane than J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. but it's all about risk-reward, right? I've always been a big believer. In the portfolios we run, we get paid to buy the best and those that are getting better, right? J.P. Morgan is both. They came through the, the, the financial calamity with uh, flying colors. Of course, they've made their own mistakes along the way, but this is quality. Um, they have taken market share, and they continue to do that across their different business units. You get great exposure to housing, capital markets, and so on. Uh, so this is one that, I, that we own and, and that I would continue to buy. I wouldn't say U.S. banks are better than Canadian banks, but the change at the margin is more positive than what's happening in Canada. So I would be a buyer of J.P. Morgan here. So between Paul's comment and Ken, if you had to pick between a Bank of America and a J.P. Morgan, which of the two would appeal to you the most? Well, they're both quite different. J.P. Morgan is higher quality, risk-reward is very good. You're not buying a rocket ship, but mm -hmm. you're buying one that is going to be consistent. 
uh, you're going to get good dividend growth. You're getting a 3% dividend uh, on the JP Morgan, which is probably more attractive for a dividend buyer. And there's Bank of America at eight cent better today. It's a fifty uh, half a percent increase. Yeah, we, I, I should say, we own both. You own both. We own both. Okay, let's go to Vaughn now. Frank, thanks for holding. Welcome to Market Call. Hey guys, uh, great show. Thanks. Uh, over the weekend, I was in Las Vegas. I was playing craps with a uh, portfolio manager at uh, Wells Fargo. Are you suggesting portfolio managers gamble? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I made him some money, and after I left, uh, I asked him quickly for a stock pick to see if he could help me out, oh, yeah. and he seemed to like Dow Chemicals. I was just wondering if I could get uh, your insight on it. I'm not going to buy it. I just want some insight. Thank you very much. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> if he bought it, would he be rolling snake eyes? Yeah, you know, look, um, Dow Chemical is going to benefit from a couple of big things going forward. First of all, the chemical companies in general are benefiting from this boom in oil and gas production in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Natural gas, a big input cost. Natural gas prices in North America are way cheaper than anywhere else in the world. So big input cost uh, benefit. Second, they benefit as the industrial economy gets a little better. And we're not saying it's racing ahead. We're moving ahead slowly. But in general, the industrial sector has been performing better. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're basically buying a spectrum of industrial exposure by buying Dow Chemical. Uh, you know, it's not, uh, again, it's not a rocket ship, uh, but you're getting a 3.5% yield. Uh, they pay a dollar twenty-eight. The company earned two thirty-six, turned two thirty-six this year. Uh, I, I have no problem owning this stock. Street consensus is it could uh, top out at $38, suggesting 4% upside. Do you find, uh, to that point about rocket ships, better value elsewhere? Yeah, I think if you looked at it in general, when you look at consensus estimates and so on, mm -hmm. they move up in a measured way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if you saw it trade at 38, I think you'd see targets go higher. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, look, um, it's, it's a diversified company. Uh, it's not a very specific uh, rifle shot but you don't have a ton of downside in it right now. All right, let's squeeze in another call before the break. Thanks, Frank. Uh, Dave in Bowmanville, hello. Uh, could you please give me your views on Finning, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dave, we have been very cautious as a firm in anything related to resources, uh, and that, that can change at some point, but it appears to us that the longer-term cycle in resources may be in trouble right now. Uh, and if you look at Caterpillar or if you look at Finning, uh, there's difficulty there. Share price is really underperforming. Mm -hmm. um, relative strength from a price performance is, uh, standpoint continues to wane. Uh, revenue growth is, is struggling a little bit. Uh, they look at their geographic exposures. Emerging markets performing worse than developed markets currently. Uh, I think it's a stock I'd stay away from. There are bottom fishers out there right now who believe that you're seeing a turn in commodity prices. We'll see if that happens. Uh, that's not our strategy to try and pick bottoms. All right, Dave, thanks for that. From Bowmanville to a commercial break, David Burroughs is our guest president and chief investment strategist at Barometer Capital Management. We're talking about North American large caps. We've got a line available now. one 326 6266 is on my dime. The past picks when we come back. <laughs> 